What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome to the very first installment here on the second channel. Or, well, if you're new here, maybe you think this is the main channel. But no, we do have a main channel called TerraQuake that has been going strong for two plus years. But we are here on TerraQuake walkthroughs to begin the Pokemon Blue walkthrough. Now, you might be wondering... Why in the world am I making a walkthrough in 2022? Well, that's a pretty good question. But if I'm going to be honest, I explained it a bit more in the update video that I posted on my main channel. But I've, you know, since I was younger, I've always wanted to just make Pokemon walkthroughs. You know, I watched people like Leroy and Maryland when growing up, and it just seemed like a lot of fun to do. And you can never go wrong with playing some good old classic vanilla Pokemon games. So here we are, starting Pokemon Blue. I'm just going to hop right into episode one of this walkthrough. First thing we got to do is change that text speed to fast, baby. We don't want to be sounding like a freaking grandpa when we go through this game. But yeah, when you, uh, when you open up a new game, you see Professor Oak welcoming us to the world of Pokemon. But yeah, I mean, hey, these games have been out for over like 20 years now, right? So maybe there's some people that still have not been able to play Pokemon Red and Blue. And if you haven't, then this walkthrough could be for you. If you're just here to, you know, watch some good old nostalgic Pokemon walkthroughs, then welcome in. But yeah, this is just going to be a chill playthrough of Pokemon Blue. And I am still going to be treating it as a walkthrough. But... For now, we gotta name our character. You already know I'm TQ. People from the main channel will probably know that. That's what I always call myself. And I just realized I don't really have a good name for our rival right here. But I think I'm just gonna go with the default Gary. Never mind, there is not a default name for him. Um, I'm not sure why they don't have Gary on here, but whatever. We're gonna go Gary. You know, the good old classic. I know, seems kind of boring, but that is A-OK. -okay. And yeah, that's really all you have to do for this opening segment. So once you've done that, just hop right into the Pokemon world. We get shrunk down into a little miniature size. And um, believe it or not, we can grab an item right off the bat, which is a potion right here. No, I do want to withdraw it. Not sure why I hit B there. But yeah, that could come in handy in a few minutes, actually. Um, but heading downstairs, our mom isn't even going to talk to us. Mom, this is like the last time I'm going to see you, so sorry, I'm heading out. <laughs> um, but yeah, unlike other Pokemon games, you actually want to go straight into Route 1 first or go to the very edge of it because Professor Oak will stop you. And we get to hop in to the starter selection um, process of the game, you know, right here. Some games you have to wait a little longer to do so, but Pokemon Red and Blue, you know, they, they get you started immediately. And I've been thinking of what my team will look like, um, and I've decided that I want to go with the turtle Bulbasaur thing. I just said its name. It's Bulbasaur, okay? It's Bulbasaur. Is it a turtle? I think it's a turtle. We might have to look at, like, its uh, category when we choose it, if it even says it. I don't know. I might just, like, show the picture. But yeah, I want to go with Bulbasaur. Um, Squirtle is my favorite out of the three, so, you know, that might come as a surprise that I'm not going with Squirtle. But hey, oh, I'm not going with Charmander, okay? I'm sorry. Charmander is my least favorite out of the three Kanto starters. Not to say I completely hate it, but I just like Squirtle and Bulbasaur better. And looks like, okay, we have Squirtle, great. So Bulbasaur's the last option that I chose. That's nice. But, um, oh no, he's just considered the seed Pokemon. Okay, maybe he's not even a turtle. And you know what? I gotta think of a nickname for this man, too. All right, Bulbasaur. What should we call you? We're just gonna call you... Alright, you know what? A recent video that I made on the main channel um, was a Pokemon Platinum video, and I called my Turtwig in there Sprout. So we're gonna call this man Sprout Jr. If I can find the J. Um, there we go. So, yeah, Sprout Jr. with the period too. That's right. I know my grammar. But yeah, you can see that uh, Gary over here, he was a little impatient, but of course he's still going to take the one that's super effective against whichever one you chose, and he's going to be hopping uh, or challenging us 
to a battle right now. And that's why I said that the potion that we just got is, uh, is, or may come in handy, you know. This fight, both of your mods are going to be level 5, so... If I'm going to be honest, I would just recommend to use your attacking move, whether that be Scratch or Tackle. Just don't bother with Growl or Leer like Gary is right here. Um, and if you picked up that potion, then you should automatically win. Like right now, he's doing more damage to us. Um, but we have that potion, so if it gets a little scary, then that's okay. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be getting many crits, at least in this fight, because if you didn't know, in Generation 1, well, I'm sure we'll learn along the way, Generation 1 was put together with, like, sticks and glue, but one of the uh, weird things about it is that critical hits are actually based on speed, or how much you outspeed the opponent, so Charmander probably has a better chance to get a crit against us right now, which would not be fun. Um, just don't crit us right here, please. Thank you. Alright, so we got him not down into the red. Wow, alright, that's fine. See, we're using that potion, baby. That's why you grab it from your PC. But yeah, like I said, most likely your rival will just randomly use either their attacking move or, you know, something like Growl. And there's a crit, so good thing we used that potion. But, um, yeah, you should be fine, unless Charmander keeps on critting me. Come on, Sprout Jr. You're almost there. We might not win this, actually. Um... Am I really about to lose? If this doesn't if this doesn't kill, I'm really about to lose the first rival battle. All right. Well, um something that you probably don't see in every Pokémon walkthrough is losing the first rival battle due to two critical hits and we had a potion. Well, um you know what? I guess there's there's a good reason for why I'm doing a Pokemon walkthrough because you guys could still experience different things even you know even though these games came out in 1990 whatever it was I honestly don't know but um yeah so great we don't even get to level up or anything I think we automatically get healed though if I'm not mistaken yeah so Sprout Jr you know he's magically healed and uh, what you need to do now is head up through Route 1 and you'll be able to find out one of the Pokemon that we can find here. It is a Rattata. If I'm going to be honest, you should probably fight some of the wild Pokemon um, at the beginning because it's really easy to gain XP. So I might get up to like level 6 real quick. But uh, yeah, the other Pokemon you can find in Route 1 is Pidgey. So Pidgey and Rattata, some of like the two most basic Pokemon. Really, neither of them are too bad of an option. Pidgey might be a little bit better. But yeah, if you want to grab yourself a Pidgey or a Rattata, you can't do it just yet because we don't have access to Pokeballs. But um, once you do get them, just know that those Pokemon are hanging out here and actually on a lot of other routes throughout the game. And right there is a potion from a little Pokemart employee. So yeah, I appreciate it, my dude. Be sure to, uh, to stop by him because, you know, in this walkthrough, apparently we're going to be needing potions after losing the first rival battle. I feel embarrassed. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I just... Gosh, that's awful. I mean, I, I feel like I let down Bulbasaur. I, I don't know what's going on. There we go. Okay, we're, we're going to make a comeback, though. We do have a chance to fight our rival um, very soon anyways, and we're going to get our revenge. Mark my words. But yeah, a little bit more about this uh, channel that I'm starting up. I'm going to be uploading daily, you know, these walkthrough videos, I'm planning for them to be anywhere in between like 15 and 25 minutes long, so, um, yeah, they, they won't be too long, there won't be too much editing, as you can tell, I'm kind of just like putting the gameplay on a little overlay, and that's really about it, it's not like a Nuzlocke series, I'm not going to have a, um, you know, pictures of the team, or like a death counter or anything, it's just a nice, chill Pokemon walkthrough, you know, I would like to say that we're changing the game by going back to how the game used to be played. You know, I mean, because back in 2010 or 2011 when walkthroughs were the thing, um, they were popular, but now it's all about the Nuzlocks and hardcore Nuzlocks, and I'm just over here like, man, I just want to play some good old regular Pokemon. So why the heck not? And if you guys want to um, hop along for the ride, then you know, consider subscribing. You don't have to, of course, though. But, yeah, um, it's much easier to get back down to Pallet Town, actually. 
you can just hop over these ledges and basically avoid all the grass besides this last little patch. But yeah, we picked up Oak's parcel from the Pokemart. And I think if you talk to Oak before going to Route 1, he tells you that, but I don't think he mentioned it to us before. So you kind of just got to do that on your own. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll give him Oak's parcel and then Gary's going to barge in here. So yeah, he's probably going to brag to us about his W that he got. Gary, I'm going to punch you in the face, you know, and way later on towards the end of the game, trust me, we'll get our revenge big time. I promise. But yeah, now it's time to receive the uh, Pokedexes. And, you know, the overall goal in Pokemon is to complete the Pokedex. You know, the good old saying, gotta catch them all. But you can't really catch them all because of version exclusives and trade Pokemon and all of that. So that phrase is a total lie. I think that's why they haven't put it on the cases for Pokemon games since, I believe it's Ruby and Sapphire. So yeah, there's a little fun fact if you didn't know. But yeah, we're not going to be trying to do that. Whenever I play through a Pokemon game, I'm just looking for my six team members. And if I have to catch a couple of other Pokemon um, along the way for like, you know, HMs and stuff, then I'll do so. Anyways, you might have just saw that Gary mentioned that his sister has a town map for us. Now, I've played through these games a bunch of times. I don't think I really need a town map. I'll probably end up uh, depositing it in our PC. But if you're new and you need, to, uh, you need to know how to get around, then definitely be sure to grab it. You don't have to, though, of course. Anyways, here's the other Mon that we're seeing. Um, we saw Rattata earlier. Now it is a Pidgey. What is up, Pidgey? But, um, yeah, another thing. Um, oh boy, there's Gust. Oh, well, here's another thing. I was gonna mention something else about Gen 1, but, yeah, some of the moves have different typings. I know Gust is normal. I kind of got freaked out there for a second. I was like, oh no, it's super effective. Really, what is with the crits? Look, I know Sprout Jr. isn't the fastest, but we don't have to bully him. Like, come on now, we do not have to bully him. And I gotta say, it just feels good doing a nice vanilla playthrough of a Pokemon game. I really like it. And then just to be able to, like, share my experience to you guys through YouTube, it's pretty awesome, man. And also, if you're new here, be sure to check out the main channel if you want. We do, you know, some more um, up-to-date Pokemon content, you know, challenges and whatnot, Nuzlocke's. Um, that type of stuff. It isn't just more Pokemon walkthroughs, I promise. But, um, yeah. Anyways, I'm hoping we get to level 7 here, because I think that's when Bulbasaur gets a new move. Guess he's not going to get to level 7 just yet. That's perfect. Um, but yeah, Bulbasaur actually only gets, I think it's a Leech Seed to start. I don't have his, like, move set pulled up. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Squirtle gets, um, it's a stab move the earliest out of the three. Stab, of course, meaning same type attack bonus, so something like Water Gun for Squirtle is gonna have a small little boost. But yeah, then Charmander will eventually get Ember, and then I think Bulbasaur actually gets a Leech Seed um, first, and I don't think we get anything until Vine Whip, which might be level 10, 11, somewhere around there. Um, first thing you wanna do, though, once you're back in Viridian City is grab this hidden potion just inside of a cut tree. Don't ask how it got there, I have no clue. But over this direction to the left is Route 22. And over here you can find a bunch of new mods actually. You got Spiro, Nidoran female, and Nidoran male. Unfortunately this isn't Pokemon Yellow because we could have gotten a Mankey. Which is honestly a pretty good mod for this early on in the game. But yeah, I believe Nidoran female is uh, more common in Pokemon Blue. You can still get it in red, but it's only like a 5 or 10% chance or something like that. And they're a little higher level than the uh, Pidgeys and Rattatas we just saw. Oh my gosh, maybe maybe I shouldn't be fighting over here. Um, that Spearow did a ton of damage. Am I really going to lose to a wild Pokemon? This has got to be a first, at least for me, okay? I don't think I've ever lost this much in the beginning of a Pokemon game. So, hey, you're experiencing something new. I mean, come on now, or at least I am. But yeah, going back to Route 22, some good Pokemon to catch there. And um, as I said earlier, there will be a rival fight if you walk um, through that grass a bit more. Gary, or whatever you call your rival, will be waiting for you, and I'm not gonna take him on just yet, because he has, like, a level 9 Pidgey to start, so I just don't think that's the best idea. For now, what we're gonna do is stock up on some Pokeballs. Um, I'll get five, 
and you might notice that we can't even get potions yet. You actually can't buy potions until Pewter City, which is stupid. I don't know why that was a thing. So be sure to pick up antidotes because in the upcoming forest, you, you might be getting poisoned, you know? But anyways, that's really all there is to do in Viridian City. Um, if you go to the right over here, you'll see that there's a Pokemon gym. But I won't spoil anything just in case there's someone out there that doesn't know what happens. But for now, just know that we can't go in that gym. It is blocked off. Now, what we can do over here is... Oh, well, actually, this guy, well, he's gotten up. I forgot that um, the first time you come to Viridian City before you get the parcel, he's actually lying on the ground. And this lady's like, oh, he hasn't had his coffee. You can't pass through here. Um, the funny thing is, I'm pretty sure it's in the Japanese version. She says that he's drunk. So, yeah, I guess, you know, when translating it, they had to make it a bit more kid-friendly. But, um, yeah, he will also show you how to catch a Pokemon, and I accidentally said yes. If you say no, then he'll show you real quick. I think he runs into, like, a Weedle. Not really sure how he does that. There's no, uh, there's no grass here in Viridian City. Um, the only wild Pokemon you can encounter is probably by fishing. But, yeah, he randomly has a level 5 Weedle appear. And he just throws one of his 50 Pokeballs. You know, old man, it would be nice if you could share that with us. I'm just saying that would be greatly appreciated. But nah, he, he doesn't want to. So yeah, then he explains that you need to weaken the target. You can also, you know, paralyze, poison, put any sort of status condition on it. That'll help. But now we are in Route 2. You'll notice some cut trees over here. We can't get to the other side until a little later on. There's actually a cave that connects to that part of the route. But in this grass right here, you can find, uh, at least the new Pokemon you can find, is Caterpie in Pokemon Blue and Weedle in Pokemon Red. Two pretty weak Pokemon. But believe it or not, I want to add one to my team. So let's see if we can find him. In the first encounter, no. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I'll probably be doing this a couple of times um, each episode. Or maybe not a couple, you know, a couple of times every so often um, throughout the series. I'll have to cut ahead. Um, I'm probably going to cut out, like, Wild Encounters too. Once we get Repels, we won't really have to worry about that. But yeah, let me cut ahead until we find my target. Alright, that took a little bit longer than I expected, but on the bright side, Sprout Jr. got up to level 7, so as you can see here, he learned Leech Seed. But, yeah, that's right, my target was a Caterpie. And I know what you guys are thinking. Terraquake, what in the world? You're catching a Caterpie, one of the weakest Pokemon you can get. Yeah, I am. And I kind of want to explain why I'm catching one. Um, first of all, when I play through Pokemon games, I typically try to use Pokemon that I've never used before because, you know, it makes the game uh, different every time you play through it. And I got to say, I have never used a Caterpie, that's for sure. Second of all, this thing can actually become a very nice addition to the team once it evolves into a Butterfree which is going to happen very soon because if you don't know, usually your early game bug types evolve pretty early on. And um, Butterfree gets access to stuff like Sleep Powder and Stun Spore and all those status moves. And in this game, Sleep never goes away. Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. That's Freeze. Sleep, it just, uh, it can stay on forever. It's like, you know, it doesn't have a limit. In later games, they limit it at what, like four turns, five turns? Here, it's just a chance every single turn. So there's a chance that the opponent could be asleep for like 10 turns, 15 turns. So sleep is kind of overpowered. And uh, looks like Caterpie is known as the Worm Pokemon. Now, eventually, it's going to evolve into a beautiful butterfly. So we're going to call this man Butter. Or no, we'll call it Butter. Yeah, because that's the cooler way to say Butter. There we go. We got Butter. The Caterpie, and I guess we can check it out real quick. I'm pretty sure it's going to be stuck with Tackle for now. That's the annoying thing. Um, you know, it really only has Tackle as an attacking move until it becomes a Butterfree. Um, but we will evolve into Metapod and get Harden at level 7. And then, as I said, level 10 is when we will get a Butterfree. But, um, yeah, that's about all I've got here for episode 1 of the Pokemon Blue walkthrough. I feel like this one may have been a little shorter, but it's okay. It's the very first episode here on the channel. Next time, we are going to be taking on the rival and going through Viridian Forest. Actually, I'll probably do that in the reverse order. I'll go through the forest first because I don't think we're ready for that rival fight. 
But um, yeah, we'll probably be doing that and then going to Pewter City. I don't think we'll be able to take on the gym yet. Um, one more thing I want to mention. Usually when I play through Pokemon games, I like to grind up my team and stuff. Um, just to make sure I'm on par with the trainers and, you know, make sure I'm not going to lose. And despite losing twice already in the first episode, I don't think I want to do grinding. You know, all, all of my training will be done on camera. I want to try and make this pretty challenging because I know people complain that Pokemon games aren't too challenging anymore. But I'm hoping to maybe um, disprove that belief by making this playthrough a little bit tough. So yeah, in the next episode, Butta and Sprout Jr. will still be level 4 and 7, and we will be heading into the Viridian Forest. But for now, thank you so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces!